His name was Fritz Fleumer. In 1920s Germany, Fleumer had the bright idea of coating paper with iron powder to make a cheap magnetic audio tape. This paper tape was fragile, but it would replace the existing expensive magnetic solid steel tape and could be edited with a pair of scissors rather than a soldering iron. Fleumer knew he was onto something. Fritz Fleumer took his invention to Berlin, uh, to AEG, which was one of the leading electronics companies in those days, and they bought the patents and so on from Fleumer and set up in 1932 a team to begin work on Das Magnetophone, the magnetic phonograph. AEG teamed up with the German chemical giant IG Farben to produce the world's first magnetic tape recorder. It would revolutionize sound recording. But when AEG demonstrated their new invention at the Berlin Radio Fair in 1935, it was not quite the sensation they hoped for. The radio engineers looked at this and said, aha, this is it. Tape would be the ideal medium. We could record on it, we can snip it up, we can glue it or tape it back together and edit the shows to our heart's content. It would be a dream come true. One problem, the original AEG magnetophone shown at the 1935 radio fair sounded terrible. The fact was that the quality was good enough for speech for use as a dictation machine. After all, the Nazis used the early magnetophone to listen into and record telephone conversations. But its commercial potential, as AEG recognized, was extremely limited. They instantly saw that there would be no business based on dictation purposes only. They had to have the possibility and, and the technical means to recording music. That would make the business. In 1936, as the Nazis consolidated their power in Germany, the world-famous conductor, Sir Thomas Beecham, took his orchestra to Berlin and made this recording on the new equipment. It was a disaster. It sounds truly terrible. Uh, in fact, Sir Thomas was so horrified by the quality of what he thought was tape that he reputedly refused to use it until, I think, 1951. Then, just as war was breaking out in 1939, came an accidental discovery that changed utterly the prospects of the magnetophone. A German radio engineer, Walter Weber, stumbled on a signal processing method called AC bias that enabled the magnetophone to record high fidelity. Weber one day was experimenting with circuits, advanced circuits that would try to get this horrible noise and distortion to a minimum and make the, sound, the tape sound better. And he discovered, quite by accident, AC bias, this oscillating a tone you would superimpose over your recorded information that would make that recorded information stand out. A second test was carried out on the new improved magnetophone. It was the revolutionary breakthrough that German technicians had been searching for. This was the introduction of the high frequency bias magnetophone to the public. And it took place in a, in a huge Berlin cinema and people were amazed. That was the moment. That was the moment everybody recognized instantly that is the that's the best method for recording music and that will make a revolution. By the 1940s, as Germany launched its assault on the Soviet Union, the magnetophone became a must-have item for wealthy Germans. An American document at the time described how Hitler himself, at the height of the fighting, acquired his own machine. Hitler was first introduced to the magnetophone in his headquarters on the Russian front in 1942, and immediately he ordered a plane to bring additional symphony recordings from Berlin. So Hitler was photographed. The Nazi propaganda machine knew when it was on to a good thing and exploited the new possibilities that the magnetophone offered. There were about six recordings of Adolf Hitler's speeches to, uh, during the World War. And Hitler didn't come to the studio. So the studio came to Adolf Hitler, and they used uh, tra transportable units of magnetophones to record these speeches. These recordings were edited and broadcasted to the public 
for propaganda news. Hitler sobbing, Hitler smiling, Hitler shouting, Hitler working his people into a frenzy. Hitler's propagandists discovered the magnetophone could be used to time shift the Fuhrer's speeches. With a sophisticated radio network, inherited by the Nazis from the previous democratic regime, Hitler could record a speech on tape in one city for transmission in another. There were even suggestions that Hitler used the new technology to deceive his enemies as to where precisely he was. There's a persistent myth that still lives today that, uh, you know, um, uh, Hitler ordered the invention of the magnetophone tape recorder to fool the Allies as to his whereabouts. Well, that's nonsense. When high-fidelity tape recording came along, yes, they recorded Hitler, yes, he was, his speeches were tape delayed and sent around. So, of course, anybody in the Allied command listening to or monitoring German broadcasting would hear him pop up, well, gee, he's in, this is coming out of the Munich transmitter, and all of a sudden we're getting a speech, and he's making references, local references to Hamburg, and, and, and now he's in Berlin. How are they doing this? Well... Uh, the, the same way they always did, clear back to the 1920s, with uh, an advanced, high-quality live network with some sort of time delay device, in this case, tape. As the war drew to a close, the plunder of Nazi science and secrets by the victorious allies began. U.S. Army Signals Corps Major Jack Mullen and his team were given the task of rooting out new German electronics. Mullen had been intrigued by the quality of late-night wartime German broadcasts. So I thought I was pretty familiar with what all types of recording were, uh, film and disc, and uh, this sounded superb, and uh, we thought probably Hitler must be having people work all night. Then, on a visit to a radio station a few weeks after the German surrender, Mullen heard an AC bias hi-fi magnetophone. I'd never heard anything like that in my life before. I couldn't hear any background noise. Very clean, no distortion that I was able to hear. Mullen copied the blueprints, shipped two surplus machines back to America, and in May 1946, went public with his Americanized tape recorders. It changed the course of the broadcast and music industries. It was a sensation. May 16th, 1946 is a, a breakthrough date in American tape recording technology. Where the blue of the night. Bing Crosby was the first Hollywood star to use this new technology from Nazi Germany. Crosby found live radio a chore, and when he heard about the amazing new machines, he hired Mullen to record and edit his show for later broadcast. It was a first. The little piece of tape that I'm going to play on here was actually recorded in 1947, and it still sounds as good as it ever did. Where the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. The first show. Bing's rating shot back up. The switchboard at ABC, NBC was flooded with calls from LA residents. Why didn't you tell us Bing was going to be live? We would have all, we wanted tickets. 